Hi everyone and welcome to this video lecture on the neuroscience of attention, empathy and counseling skills and also an introduction to neuroscience informed CBT which we'll be exploring in quite a lot of depth in this module. I'm going to start out in this um, preparation uh, for, for your class session just talking about listening and uh, one of the things that I think is most important to take out of the chapter that you will have read is that uh, attention is central to listening and that listening itself has a major impact on clients. We'll learn about interactive regulation and the work of Alan Shaw and Alan Shaw's uh, belief that uh, a, a corrective experience for a client can be achieved if the, uh, the counselor is attuned and engaged and of course attention is required as the first part of that equation. Bruce Perry, of course, very famously stated that there's no more effective neurobiological intervention than a safe relationship. And so we'll be talking a bit in class about what a safe relationship is and what it looks like. We'll also talk about the neuroscience of emotion, different emotions uh, within the body and different feelings, which is putting words to those emotions and how just the act of putting words to emotions often has uh, just large impacts uh, positively on mental health. I want to also in this module touch on the microskills hierarchy of Alan Ivey who wrote the chapter that you read. Um, and uh, of course his microskills hierarchy is very famous and Alan Ivey is probably best known for it. It's an important model for understanding the uh, sequence by which we intervene with clients, starting with basic listening, then leading eventually, uh, if the time is right, uh, to influencing skills and later to meaning making. And so we'll talk about that process uh, in, within counseling and why it's so crucial to follow that kind of stepwise progression. In addition, in this class session, we'll be starting to introduce neuroscience informed CBT. We'll talk about why a new model of CBT is needed. We'll talk about the NCBT model of client care. We'll look at some case studies to apply NCBT. And we'll briefly touch on the research that's been conducted so far in the method. We'll begin with talking about the uh, ABCDE model of Albert Ellis, which was a large influence on the NCBT model. We'll talk about challenges to these traditional models of CBT. A, good, uh, a couple of these, for example, are that the client often has no awareness of their behavior until after the fact when it's too late. Active, activating events or antecedents are not always apparent. Beliefs are not necessary for consequences to occur. Cognitive distortions might actually be dysregulated cognitive processing during moments of threat. Consequences can occur before a person is cognizant and that if we're not careful, the client will assign responsibility for something where they really had a really relatively limited control. We'll then uh, start to uh, move towards how our understanding of neuroscience throughout this course can inform assessment, case conceptualization and treatment, uh, especially using the neuroscience informed CBT frame. There's a very famous quote by Lisa Feldman Barrett that we'll be discussing. A brain did not evolve for rationality, happiness or accurate perception, rather to ensure resources, for physiological systems for growth and survival. It's a very different take on the purpose of the brain. We'll talk about what we know from brain science about distressed brain states. This will be a recall for you from our trauma course uh, class, I should say. Then we'll talk about wave one processing, which I'm not going to get into in a lot of depth here because we'll need to go over it in quite a bit in class and wave two processing. And we will talk about then the new ABCs and the model of the new ABCs that NCVT proposes. Uh, the first wave one, wave one and wave two, which we'll be talking about. In wave one, you have the activating event, that's the A, where something happens, the antecedent. Then you have 
wave 1b, which is brain from the bottom up. The brain makes sense of what happens, often pre-consciously, without our awareness. Wave 1c, or consequences, that the body tells uh, the, the body does what the brain tells it to do and responds instinctively, reflexively, and often that leads to the release of cortisol and adrenaline in threat detection uh, example, examples. And then we become aware, aware of what the body is doing. There's more sensory input uh, that's involved. And then we become aware of being aware, and that's brain from the top down. That's wave 2b. So that's when we start really thinking about what's just happening, what's going on, and becoming aware of our own uh, physiological activation. And then we make sense of what's just happened. And though that is wave two consequences. So that's a very brief introduction to the model of the waves of NCBT. And we'll be talking much more about that in class. I want to briefly uh, mention uh, to close out that there are some handouts that are very useful uh, when working with clients that we'll also be showing you uh, as part of this class session. So it is important for you to bring the treatment manual with you to class. And then in our next class together, we'll be exploring treatment phases, especially the attend and build and connect paradigm for treatment. All right, everyone, that's the introduction to our class. I'll see you all. Uh, uh, for our class and we'll discuss some of these um, pieces in a lot more depth then.